Mary, and today I want to talk about the importance of being Ray. Ray was really the first character that I went on my social media and I asked my friends, am I too old to cosplay this character? The answer was a resounding no, uh, which I wholly agree with, by the way. You are not too old. You are not too young. You are not too black or Asian or Latina or male or any of those things. And that's really important for the same reason that I could be Luke on the playground when I was a kid. Amazing to me to see such a broad range of people connecting with Rey, being Rey. So not long after Force Awakens, actually pretty much after the first of the year in 2016, I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I had my first version, which was, yeah, good enough, ready for C2E2 in April of 2016. And there are so many things that people connect to with her. We talked about that when I did the drawing for the print by Lucas Durham. And people talked especially about things that that image evoked of her longing to find her place and the hope and the determination she had for waiting that long and not giving up. And that's a big part of who she is. And a lot of it also is just going into things and just going for it and not hesitating. And that's an amazing lesson for so many of us. And so that was kind of the lesson I had to learn and going, yeah, I can be this character. I am quite a bit older than Daisy Ridley. I'm certainly quite a bit older than Ray. And it doesn't matter. The little girls don't care. The little boys don't care. The grown-ups, they don't care. I'm sure there's somebody out there who cares, but what they're looking for in a cosplayer is not anything that's really concerning to me, so whatever. There is on Facebook, and if you're at all thinking of doing Ray, I absolutely encourage you to join. On Facebook, the Ray Cosplay community has about 700 members and is incredibly supportive. The last few days, I think it's, you know, kind of the come down from after The Last Jedi and all of the events associated with it. We've had several people go, I feel like I'm going into this desolate winter of not this thing that I've been experiencing and how do you guys deal with that? Coming along with that from several people is, you know, feeling bad about the quality of their costume or their ability to do the characterization or how they don't physically match her. And every single time people are coming back with, it doesn't matter. You are the spirit of right. All of us are. And that's just such a beautiful thing to see. And it's true. When those kids see you, it does not matter. And that's at a con, at a movie premiere, if you choose to join the Rebel Legion or if you choose to join other groups. It, you know, and a lot of times it's the kids who are, you know, it's the hospital visits, it's the kids who are sick, it's the kids also though who, they're not the kids who are going to get to go to Disney World. They don't get to meet princesses as a matter of course on their family vacation every year. And to bring that experience to them, to bring that experience to a child of bringing that character off of the screen and into their presence is, it's magic. And there's really nothing like it. There was one event I did and there was a little girl dressed as Ray, who was hanging off to the side as the kids were lining up to do this obstacle course thingy. And I, and I said, are you gonna try it? And she looked at me, she said, I'm too nervous. And I'm like, oh my God, you're six years old. How do you have so much anxiety already? This costume that she put on and being able to take my hand and go get in line and try this and feel like she was Ray venturing out from Jakku to, to find her destiny. And we had a Kylo at the event who, he's brilliant. He has little, little tiny ones of his own, so he's really good at gauging, you know, how to back off, how to be less threatening, and especially in the mask. And she was terrified of him. And she kind of was curious, and she's looking at her out the corner of her eye. And I, and I said, I said, what do we know about Kylo Ren? Remember what we saw in his mind? that he's afraid. And so we can tell him, I know you're afraid. <laughs> and she took my hand and there's this little tiny voice looking up at him and I know you're afraid. And he looked and he said, 
and she finally just ripped it out. I know you're afraid. And I swear you could see this kid get like two inches taller. What it meant to this kid to take on that character to take on that strength and take it into herself was amazing and it happens over and over and over again. My favorite moment in six days, six days of being Rey, release week for, life for The Last Jedi. The first night I went, there's this little girl, probably about five. I don't think, I'm not sure she was even five. I, I talked to her a little bit in the line before they went to the movie and I gave her one of my Rebel Legion trading cards, my little Rey cards. And we went in and we watched the movie. And when I came out, I came out one door of the, of the theater and she came out the other. And I saw her coming out, looking at the card, and turning it over. And she hugged it. And she just kept bouncing up and down and being, and she ran up to me and she was bouncing and she was dancing. And this was after the movie. So she basically, she, she came out loving Ray even more than she had going in. And to this little one, I was Ray. It's not about me, it's about her and what you can bring to kids and, and adults. I mean, I get the best comments from adults too. And it's just magic. Okay, so here comes the part where we're gonna get spoilery because we're gonna talk The Last Jedi. Now, every event I have been to for the last year and a half that I have been trooping as Ray, I've always got somebody come up, who are your parents? You know, and I've been able to say up until now, I don't know. I, I can't remember. And you know, you, you play it in character and she doesn't know, you know, so that's fine. I mean, everyone has their theories anyway, but when you are Ray, oh boy, do you hear all of them. And most of them, honestly, I would have been fine with. There are a couple of, that are just kind of way out there and you know that people are picking them because it's not what everyone else is saying. That's fine. Uh, there's one less way out there that I was still was not super fond of. I was never a big fan of the Kenobi theory for reasons that have more to do with who Obi-Wan was than anything else. But ultimately, my very first instinct when I saw The Force Awakens was she needs to be the prodigy out of nowhere the way that Anakin was. And that's not quite true of Anakin if you if you believe what Palpatine is hinting very, very strongly in the in the opera scene that he was essentially engineered. But for all intents and purposes, as far as anyone else knows, he just came out of nowhere. And it I didn't necessarily it didn't necessarily need to be for her to be literally the child of the force the way that he was, but that it's not this family legacy. It's not from a place that you expect. So since then, I've kind of been 50-50 on the Nobody and the Skywalker. And they both have their value. I would have been perfectly fine with either one. I think ultimately, Nobody from Nowhere is the answer that we need right now because it gives her the opportunity to say, I am from nowhere, I have made myself. To have come from something ordinary and to be what she has made herself, I feel like is the message that we need right now. I feel like all those little kids who come up to me, who feel like they can be Ray too, that's what they need right now. That our world needs the story where we are our own hero and you know and maybe just maybe she's not the only one the force called maybe she's the one who answered and that's a powerful idea to me too that why are you here Ray from nowhere she's here because the call came and she's the one who answered and how Luke deals with that is an entirely different topic that I will address in a different video. But the thing is, she is there not because she is meant to be there so much as she needs to be there. And the call has come and she's answered it. And maybe that's what, maybe that's ultimately what she needs. 
maybe that's ultimately why so many people, all ages, all walks of life, feel so connected to her. Because the universe needs her, and she said yes. So, may the force be with you, and until next time, bye-bye!